All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for joining me today for another Nimble training webinar. Today, we're going to go over the entire application, and we're also going to demonstrate how to use the mobile application. If you have any questions or feedback during today's session, please type them into the questions box, and we're gonna cover them at the end of today's session. So before we get started, let's spend a few minutes discussing what Nimble is. So Nimble is an easy to use CRM that works for you in Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, and everywhere else you work. It automatically combines your contacts, communication histories, email inboxes, and calendar appointments. It also integrates with social media and with almost 200 different SaaS applications. Now, let me get set up here and start sharing my screen for you. Okay, let me move some stuff around so I can see. Okay, so here we are on Nimble's Today page. This page was designed to allow you to completely customize it to your specific needs and the role you play in your company. Now, before the Today page starts populating with data, we have to make sure that everything we need is connected to Nimble. And you can do that by clicking this button on the top right-hand corner and then going to Networks and Imports. All right, so let's make sure that your email account is connected to Nimble. Nimble supports all email providers as long as they are IMAP. Unfortunately, we don't support POP, but if your email is POP, you can try contacting your email provider to see if they can enable IMAP for you. If you're using Microsoft 365, we have great news for you because connecting your email, calendars, and even importing your contacts can be done with only one click. And you can do that by leaving all of these checked, or you can customize it depending on what you'd like to connect or import, and then simply connect Microsoft 365 with this button right here on the bottom. You'll then be asked to log into your Microsoft 365 account and then pick the contacts you want to import from Outlook. And always remember when you're importing contacts to apply tags to them as you import them. And this can ensure that both you and your teammates know who imported what contacts and from where. So let's go back. If you're using Gmail, it's pretty similar. You just click that icon right there connect your account, and uh, that's how you connect your Gmail. The only difference is you're gonna have to scroll down a little bit to this calendar section to connect your Google Calendar. If you're using any other IMAP type emails, simply select the IMAP option in emails, and you can connect your email that way. All right, so let's, let's cover uh, social media networks. So you can go here and connect your social media. So Nimble currently only directly integrates with Twitter, and this is what it looks like when you have it connected. And that means that after you connect your Twitter account to Nimble, you'll be able to see the entire history of your conversations with people you've had on Twitter directly inside your Nimble account together with your email conversations. And when we get to our contact section of this webinar, I can show you exactly what that looks like. So unfortunately, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn made the, the business decision a few years ago to close their APIs. So we're currently not able to directly integrate with them, but we do still make it possible for you to use Nimble on all your favorite social media networks via our browser extension called Nimble Prospector. And I'll preview that later during today's session. It's possible to import your LinkedIn contacts um, into Nimble by downloading them from your LinkedIn account and then using our CSV import to bring them into Nimble. If you wanna make sure that your LinkedIn contacts are always up to date in your Nimble account, you can either run this export and import periodically, or you can use our Nimble Prospector browser extension to bring them in as you add them to your LinkedIn network. And note that Nimble is always going to automatically merge all duplicates if they have the same email address. And I already kind of touched upon importing from CSV files. So this is a really convenient way to do that because a lot of companies use spreadsheets with lists of their customers and prospects. 
Now you can either first make sure that all your column names correspond with the names of the fields in Nimble, or you can manually map them upon import. And so just to make sure that we know where to go, you can either click this quick contact, import CSV, or you can go to contacts and click CSV here. If you're transitioning from a different CRM or you're importing contacts from LinkedIn, it's really likely that we already know what kind of uh, file format you've been using. Um, and we'll give you the option to select from our saved mappings so you can save time on mapping the fields manually. So as an example, I'm just gonna import and see we have the different fields here and you can save this mapping or choose a different mapping. All right, let's go back. So now we're back on our today page. Now that your emails and calendars are connected and your contacts have been imported, the Today page will be populated with valuable business information. Our Today page is completely customizable, so you and everybody else in your company can pick what widgets you wanna see. The widgets can be also moved around, removed, and duplicated. And you can either do this by clicking this button here, Manage Widgets, on the top right corner, and it brings up this menu. Or each widget has three dots in the top right hand corner that you can click to either move, hide, or duplicate. Duplicating widgets can be useful if you'd like to be able to see your personal calendar in one box and your team calendar in another without having to change the view in the drop down menu. So let's talk about each of these. Let's start with calls. So it's pretty self explanatory. You can track all of your interactions with your customers to help stay on top of your follow-ups, improve relationships and manage your, or measure your team's success. Your custom activities, I think it's hiding down here. Yep, custom activities. This will allow you to display all your pending, completed and overdue custom activities. In the deals widget, all the way up here. And again, you can customize uh, this widget view. Um, in the deals widget, you can check the status of your deals and your overall pipeline and take progressive action directly from your dashboard. So you can click into your deals to access engagement history and current insights on your key contacts. You can update deal statuses, add notes to existing deals or create new deals. The stage funnel widget will allow you to track your sales funnel. You can monitor your active prospects, leads and opportunities at each stage to see a quick overview of your stages to know where you need to focus to meet your goals. And down here in our pipeline chart, um, this shows you all of your deals organized by date. So the color coding on each bar gives you a visual of the amount of the deals you're managing by the stage they're in for that month. And you can also change the time frame that you're looking at. You can change weighted or total. And you can also see just your deals or your team's deals. All right, so now let's go to tasks up here. The tasks widget will help you follow through on all your to do's. And you can see all your open tasks, upcoming, overdue, completed, your important tasks, as well as your team's tasks. And you can customize that by opening this drop down menu and selecting which ones you'd like to see. The events widget right up here, or the calendars widget, whatever you'd like to call it, will allow you to review your meetings for that day. You can select from the drop down menu and either see all your calendars you've connected to Nimble or only your personal calendar. The, in the signals widget, you can see how your prospects and customers are interacting with you on Twitter. And highlighted contacts, this will give you the option to see important contacts based on the parameters you set, such as their title, where they are, their company, or their interests. And you can personalize the suggestions for highlighted contacts um, in the contact keywords setting in your Nimble settings. And again, to access your settings, you go all the way up here and then click settings. 
Nimble is going to search for the keywords that you choose in their social and contact bio for your contacts to surface relevant people for you to connect with. And speaking of contacts, let's go to the contact page. So this is the page that you're probably going to be using the most. Nimble has a lot of great features, but at its heart, it is a contact database. You can easily select if you want to see all your contacts, people, companies, your important contacts, recently viewed contacts, recently added, recently contacted, people you have stay in touch reminders for, and people you've removed. So let's go into what an individual contact record looks like. Let's go into the important. And as you may already know, this is our CEO, John Ferrara. All right, so you can see all his basic information um, at the top of the con contact record, like his name, his picture, his title, and the company he works for, and a short bio, etc. And we also have all the little social media icons here that you can click into and it'll bring you directly to the profile. And it's also really easy to uh, write notes by clicking this icon here. And you can click that top bar to minimize it. You can also log activities. And this is for past activities. You can schedule upcoming activities. You can send email messages, and you have the option to select from templates and track them, and you can also add deals. You also have the ability to set up your privacy here. And so right now I have them shared with everyone, but I could also make them private to just myself, viewable to everyone, but not editable to everyone, or I can set up custom privacy groups. Privacy groups are useful if you want each of your teams and or departments to have different sets of permissions. And this can really speed up your onboarding process. So for example, every time you're adding a new sales rep to your team in Nimble, you can just add them to your sales team in settings and they'll have the exact same set of permissions as everyone else on the sales team. On the Nimble contact record, you can also set up to stay in touch reminders. And we have a lot of different preset time intervals. We have weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, or you could set up something custom. And from this menu, it's also really easy to reset your reminder or just completely remove it. Another useful feature is that you can set a contact owner. So right now I have it set to myself, but I could give it to someone else on my team or I could leave it unassigned. If we scroll down a little bit, you can also review, edit, and create new tags, as well as qualify leads using fields like rating, status, source, and type. And these individual fields can be customized by going into your settings all the way up here, and then navigating to data fields. Okay. So back to our contact record on the right hand side, under interactions, you can see the entire history of interactions you've had with this person, including all their notes, emails, Twitter messages, deals, and any activities. And as you grow your relationships with your contacts, this view might get a little bit overwhelming because it's all of your activities. So if you want to narrow down your focus a little bit, we have these different tabs within the interactions tab. So this one just shows activities and you can select which kinds of activities you'd like to view. You can see the notes that you have associated to your contact messages, and this includes emails that you've exchanged with this contact, emails that your team has ex exchanged, and also Twitter DMs. And we also have deals here, so this will show all the associated deals. Next to your interactions tab, you can see the data fields tab in which you can create up to five custom tabs and under each of them up to 200 individual custom fields. And all these fields can then be segmented as well. 
and it's ideal to use for any specific information you'd like to record. Again, data fields can be configured from going to your settings and then clicking data fields. You and your team members can also upload files from OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, or you can upload directly from your computer. So let's go back to the main contacts page and I'll go all contacts and let's cover segmentation. So there are two ways for you to access our segmentation feature. We have the segment search button in the main part of your contacts page, or on the left-hand side, we have the plus add segment button. And both of these take you to the same page. You can search across many different data fields to help you organize your contacts into lists. And the reason why you'd wanna be able to do that is because you can then take bulk actions, send group messages, and set follow-up tasks. So let's go through an example just so you know how it works. So I'm going to look for people who were last contacted by my team. And I'm also going to look for people who have their email set up. So let's see, last contacted by my team. And you can also pick a time interval. And then I'm going to put email not empty and then update that give me one second i think my air conditioner just turned on and i don't want it to interfere with the audio too much okay sorry about that um so here we have all the people that were last contacted by my team who have email addresses and once i have this list of people I can select the entire list either this way or by clicking this arrow and clicking select all. And I can mark them all as important. I can set tags for them. I can set stay in touch reminders for the same time intervals that we went over a while ago. We can also take bulk actions such as changing the owner, changing privacy, or adding to them to a lead pipeline and we can go over the lead pipelines later in this presentation. You can merge them, export them, or send a group message. On the topic of group messages, Nimble allows you to send targeted messages to 100, 200, or 300 contacts per day. And this is a really great way to send targeted sales outreach or marketing messages to lists of your contacts. The most common question we get about Nimble's group messaging is if it can replace a regular marketing automation system. And the simple answer for that would be no. Our group messaging was designed to be able to be used in, con in conjunction with our segmentation feature to allow you to send targeted email outreach. The biggest advantage of our group messaging feature is that the messages are sent from your personal email address so they'll appear as if they were sent from you and not some anonymous marketing system. So when you're composing emails in the group messaging window, you have the option to use merge tags. That's this thing right here, but I'm just gonna delete it and show you how I got it. So you click plus add merge tag. So if you pick the first name merge tag, Nimble is going to automatically grab the first names of everybody on your outreach list to help you personalize the message. You can also attach files and use our formatting options to further customize your email. You can set up your signature by going to settings, email settings in this little menu here, and then email signature. And from this little box here, you can either create a new signature or you can copy and paste your existing signature. Either works. So let's go back to our message. So once you, oops, what is this? I'll just cancel that, okay. So once you create your email, you have the option to save it as a template by clicking this button up here. And this can save you time on rewriting or retyping the same message again in the future. And you can also pick from existing templates by clicking this drop-down menu. 
templates are shareable, so you can easily share them with your team. Now, before you send your outreach, it's always great to send yourself a test message first, just to make sure that everything looks good, you don't have typos, and all of the links that you have in your email are working. After you've sent your message, you can also review the insights on the clicks and opens. You'll be able to see how many people opened your message, how many of them clicked on the links, and how many people haven't opened your message yet. You can then use these insights to follow up with people that opened more than once or twice and send them maybe another possibly templated message. All right, so let's go on to activities. And that would be the tab right next to messages up on the top. So the activities listing feature provides you with a comprehensive table of your scheduled and completed activities. Um, the table columns can be configured to quickly see which data is important to you. Additionally, your activities can be exported. You'll be able to select the team members for whom you'd like to create the report on the left side by clicking this icon here and then checking the boxes. You can also pick which activities you wanna see specifically. So we have our quick filters, including tasks, events, calls, completed. All right, and you can also pick which activities, oops, sorry, you can also configure the table to only focus on specific fields. Over here with this calendar, you can click the time period that you'd like to see as well. Now to export your report, you can click the export button on the top and that'll give you the option to export your activities. So let's go on to our leads function. So as I mentioned, this is a pretty new feature. Um, so here we have our lead pipelines. This feature enables you and your team to visualize the progress of your leads. And you can qualify them as they go through the buying process and ultimately convert to a sale. So right now I have it set to the influencer, influencer relationships lead pipeline. But we also have our default one as well. And you can see that the stages are named differently because you can customize them to suit your business needs. At the beginning of your lead generation process, you can find yourself with a bunch of potential deals sitting at the early stages of your pipeline. And these deals might not be ready to move forward through the sales process, but they might also not be cold enough for you to be, for them to be marked as lost or deleted. This can cause a lot of clutter in your deals pipeline and can distract you from focusing on the deals that require your attention. So in Nimble, you can add leads to your account before adding them to your deal pipelines. The lead pipeline is a separate pipeline to store your pre-qualified leads before they become deals. And once you decide that a lead is qualified, you can easily convert leads to deals and add them directly into your pipeline to start your sales process. Leads can be imported into your account via spreadsheets or an API. Leads allow you to organize your potential contacts before moving them into your sales pipeline. And they can also be moved into your pipeline in bulk using our segmentation feature like I showed you a while ago. So let's set up our pipelines and stages. Now, once you've acquired a new lead, it'll go through a series of phases to be qualified and these phases depend on your business. These qualifications can include scheduling a sales call, um, making a mark sending a marketing message, you can send a quote, et cetera. To set up your pipeline so it reflects your internal processes, visit the leads tab, that's right up here, and then choose settings on the very, very right hand side here. So once you're here, you can click add new pipeline to start the process of naming your pipeline and creating your stages. Um, you can also set instructions for your stages as well. So let me use this one as an example. So if I click edit stages here, I can click this pen icon to edit my stage. I can rename it and add instructions. 
or I can click the trash can icon to delete it. So let's go back to the pipeline settings. All right, so in addition to these customizable stages, we also have lost reasons that you can add to your pipeline. Um, and you'll be able to customize these and add as many as you need, depending on your business. And then down here, we have our lead cards. Uh, you can customize the fields that appear in your lead cards to what's relevant for you. And the fields that you select will appear at a glance on the lead card when you're back in the pipelines view. So let's go back there. Just click leads. And now we're back in our pipeline. All right, so full info about your lead can be found within your contact record. So if I click on my contact, you can see full details here. Or you can go back to the pipeline and then switch it to the listing view so you can see all of their details in this list. And that's lead pipelines. Now let's move on to deals. You can use the deals feature to manage your sales opportunities, marketing projects, your regular projects, renewals, and more. Nimble allows you to create as many pipelines as you need. The account owner can delegate permissions to different users to be able to configure and create pipelines. And to create a pipeline or to edit an existing pipeline, you can go to Customize Pipelines here in the top left. To create a brand new pipeline, you can click plus Add Deal Pipeline, and then you can name it and start creating your individual pipeline stages. I'm gonna use this one as an example. So the number of stages completely depends on your sales process. You can easily drag and drop them to change the order. You can rename them. And you can also set a limit for the number of days in each stage. And right now, as you can see, I have it limited to 30 days per stage. Now when we go back to the main deals tab, you can select to see your deals in a pipeline like this or in a list. And you can do that by clicking this button here on the top right hand corner, the little green one. All right. So to create a new deal, select the new deal button here on the top left hand corner. And from here, you can add all the different details about your deal. So you can name it, relate the deal to multiple contacts and companies. You can add the valued amount of the deal, schedule an expected close date, project the probability of it closing. And then you can also choose the starting or beginning stage of your deal. You can also export all your deals by clicking this export to CSV button. You can choose if you wanna export all of them, only the active ones, only the one deals, lost, or you can also pick deals attributed to specific people on your team. All right, so that's our deals pipeline. Let's move on to reports. All right, so Nimble enables you to build reports for specific pipelines during any time period you select. And this can be for your team or as a whole by an individual user, or uh, sorry, this can be for your team as a whole or by an individual user. Um, choose from one of our preset time periods right up here. So last week, last month, last quarter, last year. Or you can click this calendar button to uh, change the exact timeline that you'd like to see. So let's go to our dashboard. Our dashboard is where you can view yourself and your team members deal progress at a glance. And right now I don't have anything in here yet, but this is kind of what it would look like for you. Forecasted deals will show you all future deal outlooks. And again, you can change your custom time period or you can click one of our preset ones. Then finally for deals history, this is where you can view all historic deal results, sorting by your time intervals. Again, you can click here 
or you can click in one of these time periods. So that's it for all of the main features within Nimble, uh, within the Nimble app. Um, now let's go cover our Nimble Prospector browser extension. This is available for Firefox, Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Safari, and it enables you to work in the places where you probably spend the most time in. It works on any website, in any third-party cloud-based application, and on any social media platform. Now, speaking of social media, let's hop into LinkedIn. So let me go back to my feed. All right, so here on the right-hand side, we can see Nimble Prospector. Let me just go back here. Oops, there you go. So Nimble Prospector will allow you to create new records and update existing ones straight from LinkedIn. You can simply hover over any hyperlinked name. So let me find a name to hover over. Okay, so you can hover over a hyperlinked name or you can go into their profile and highlight their name. And as you can see, their details will show up on the right, or you can actually move it to the left like that. Either way, it's going to show up in the Nimble Prospector browser extension and you can create a new contact for them, just like that. Nimble also works on any company website so you can open it up on any website and it'll bring you uh, your existing contact record or it'll automatically create a new one for you. You can also use the extension in the About Us section when prospecting to help you add people's information into your database. And that's the browser extension. Let's go into the Desktop Outlook app. So here's Outlook. After you install the Nimble Outlook add-on, you'll be able to just click on the Nimble icon in the top right-hand corner to bring up the add-on. If you open it up on an email from a person that you already have an existing contact record for, you'll be able to update the record as well as mark them as important, schedule stay in touch reminders, you can also create notes, tasks, deals, etc., and see the history of your interactions. The web app is basically the same thing. So let's go into Outlook on the web app and you can see that it is the same. The nimble icon is just kind of within the, the email information and you click it that way. All right, so let's move on to Gmail. If you're using Chrome and you already have the Prospector browser extension installed, like I do, the Gmail extension is going to automatically appear in Gmail. You'll be able to do everything that we already covered, so it'll just appear like this instead. And that would be it for all of Nimble's main functions on computer. So I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Nadia, and she's going to show you what it looks like on mobile. Hello everyone, let me just try to connect my phone to my computer. And then I'll share my screen. There we go. Um, Vivian, can you see my screen? Yep, all good. Okay, perfect. So uh, Nimble is available in both iOS and Android. Um, I'm going to, I have my phone already previewed, um, but the features on Android are almost identical to my iPhone. So, yeah, I'll get this going. So uh, in the first tab, Agenda, you'll see when you log into the app, uh, will be the Agenda tab. It will allow you to quickly see what meetings are on your calendar for the day and the contact record of the people you're meeting with, including information such as when you last spoke to them, their contact details, 
Uh, and if there are any notes, you or anybody on your team created, if there are any pending deals. Oh, I do not know what happened to your phone. There we go. Uh, and you can also easily email them or dial them directly from here as well. And then underneath the task tab, you'll be able to see all your upcoming, completed, started, and also delegated tasks. You can also create a new task group here as well. And then under the context tab, uh, this allows you to search for individual contact records by using the search box. And you can also click on the three lines on the left corner of your screen and search all contacts, people, companies, marked as important contacts, recently viewed contacts, recently added contacts, and stay in touch reminders as well to view contacts from saved searches and those that have been tagged. And then on the right corner of your screen, after clicking the plus sign button, you'll be able to choose the option to create a new contact or company record. So that's for the contacts tab. Under the deals tab, you can easily preview all your deals from your pipelines or also create a new one. And then under the more tab, which is the last tab on the mobile app, this will give you the option to view the email tracking, which will be giving you insight on how many people are interacting with your message. And you'll also be able to set notifications and easily contact our support team if you have any questions. So that is it for the app. Vivian, are you okay if I give you back the screen? Sure thing. Let me just make myself the presenter. All right. You can see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's go back here. All right, so here, oh, I actually didn't update these dates. Um, uh, Nadia, could you send the webinar page link in the chat, please? So these dates aren't accurate, but we do have webinars every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, we have our Nimble training webinars and they go over all the different topics. So you can see some of the topics here. This isn't an accurate depiction of the next few events for the coming month, but um, that's what they would look like. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and we also have a special offer for uh, new users. So if you sign up today, you can get 30 days of Nimble for free by clicking the link nimble.com slash offers slash webinar 30. And Nettie, if you could also send that in the chat, that'd be great as well. All right, so let's start going over our questions. Um, we have a couple questions in our question box um, that I can go over today. So let's start with Aubrey. Aubrey's asking, I've been having issues with contact syncing. I've tried to delete and reconnect my account, but still don't see any contacts, um, any advice. So this doesn't sound like something that should be happening. So I would recommend for you to uh, email care at nimble.com and I'll answer that in the questions box so you can have that email care at nimble. Com. They should be able to help you out with that. All right, so Katie is saying, would love your advice. I run a two sister business or two sister businesses. How can I best separate contacts within one account while also allowing overlap? Would it be with tags? Um, yeah, you could use tags. Um, also, I kind of went over our privacy features here. Well, actually, I think that if you're the one running both of them, then the tags would be the best way to do it. So let's go to contacts. So yeah, your tags here, as I said, when you're importing people, you always want to uh, tag them as they are imported. So you'd wanna tag them with probably the name of the business that they're being associated with, also the time that they were imported. So if I can have like 2021 imports and you can maybe have like the name of their business, and then import, like the date that you imported them. I hope that helps. Um, but we also have another webinar coming up about uh, contact cleanup strategies. We also have a couple others about like organizing your database. So um, stay tuned for those. And I think they might be able to give you more specific 
help with that. All right, other questions. Let's see. Does Nimble work with Instagram? Yes, it does, but only if you're searching Instagram through your desktop. Um, like I said, we have our Nimble uh, Prospector browser extension, and it works the same way on LinkedIn as it does on Instagram. All right, we have another question. Um, can you set a stay in touch reminder for a group of contacts, such as everyone with a specific tag? Yeah, you can. So you just head over to the contacts tab. Okay, let me show that. So you go to contacts, go to segment search, then add contact filter. Let's type in tag. And then you can choose is to choose which tag you'd like to see. So let's go with nimble friends and update that. And so here we have the nimble friends tag. And you can click all of them and set stay in touch reminders this way. Can you add a custom data field in the deals page? Asked by Debbie. So let's go to deals and by custom fields, um, what exactly do you mean by that? So we have our different stages that you can customize. Um, let's see, customize here. All right, so we go in here. For our deals pipelines, you can customize their stage names and the limit of the days in the stage. Um, as for custom fields, to be honest, I'm not quite an expert on our deals section. Um, so I am not really sure how to answer that question, but we do have um, tutorials on our deals pipelines and reporting specifically on our YouTube page. Um, and I think that would be able to give you a much more specific answer. Oh, so you said when we enter a deal, we want to track specific things when the deal is entered. Mm, yeah, I would re recommend for you to check our deals, pipelines, and reporting past tutorials. And I think that would give you um, a much better answer than I would be able to give you. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so next question. If I'm creating a new company and type in their URL, will Nimble automatically populate the address, phone, et cetera? Type in their URL. Oh, okay, I see. So at the moment, no, um, but we will. you will have to manually add all of that. So next question is, can two or three people use the same Nimble account effectively? Yes, it's possible. Um, just make sure you have your contact cleanup strategy before everyone imports um, their contacts into Nimble. So I recommend signing up for another training webinar, Nimble for Teams, or our data cleanup. All right, so I think that covers all of the questions so far. Um, does anyone else have any other questions before I close this out? All right, so it seems like um, that's everything. Thank you again so much for joining me in today's webinar. Um, you can expect a follow-up shortly after this webinar ends, including the link to um, the webinar recording on YouTube. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day or your evening. Thank you.